We're the Crusader Cavalry. This is the Frenzy on Channel 9 News. Channel 9 News, we do go by that. Yeah, WCPO Channel 9, we've gone by a lot of names. That's the best it. is how I like to go by, though. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah. go with that. Yeah, I, I said, what's your name, man? Because we always like to say, you know, give credit to the guys that's, that, that lead us into this. He was like, just call me Sticky. <laughs> I was like, that's not a great nickname. I would never <laughs> want to be called Sticky unless it's talking about football and catching the ball. He said that's actually what it was. Okay, well then, you nailed please it. go on. You nailed it. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, on the Friday Football Frenzy, sponsored by Chick-fil-A. One of the more intriguing conference races right now, Keenan, is in the ECC. Absolutely is. Milford unbeaten. Kings unbeaten. You saw Kings win tonight. They stay that way. When Woods does have one loss, though, and so they've got some ground to make up if they want to make some noise in the ECC. Yeah, that's right. If they can start making up some of that ground tonight, uh, with a matchup against Milford, a chance to hand Milford its first conference loss this season. You saw this game live on WCPO.com. It is Winton Woods by 12 here in the third quarter. And Keenan, you know the rule when we show a special teams play. You know big things are about to happen. Usually not good for the kicking team, right? Probably not good for the kicking team and indeed oh, not, that poor good. Kicker. not good for the kicking team here. Jermaine Matthews Jr. made one move. When he caught the pun, he takes that thing all the way to the house. That puts Winton Woods up by three scores there in the second half. And the rest of this one was history. Getting tight in the ECC, as you mentioned, with the Warriors win, there's now a four-way tie for second place in that league, all of them behind unbeaten Kings. We'll be looking out for that one, of course. Let's stay in the ECC now. Loveland at Little Miami. Ashton Middlecamp is going to power through for the score here for the fourth, first score of the game. Loveland trying to keep pace. Braden Bushoff going to get one of the easier interceptions that he's had in his lifetime. That would set up another middle camp score here. Little Miami able to edge Loveland tonight, 24 to 21. Now we told you that there's a four way tie for second, same for third, four teams, including these two at one and three of these. Wow. Yeah, tight conference race there. Yeah, the Park Hills now first play in the second half between Cooper and Cuffcalf. Jags running back Brendan Ty shows off the total package on this run. Vision, balance, speed. A lot of speed. 97 yards later, Cooper led this one 14 to nothing. Trying to beat Cupcap for the first time. Now, you may have heard there's a spirit that will not die at Cupcap. Preston AG on the keeper, and the Colonels were on the board with five minutes left in the third. Cupcap rotates quarterbacks. Evan Pitzer showing off the arm here. Mason Zion only had one catch tonight. He really made it count there. He had his knee down, so not able to go for the score. That set up another AG rushing touchdown. He had four in all tonight for the number in Park Hills. It takes them four overtimes to beat Cooper. The final, 31-24. What a game. Give Cooper a lot of credit. Yes, man. absolutely. Cubcap has always beaten them, and it's it's never been close. But, yeah, man, give him a lot of credit. Well, that district could be fun this year. Highlands wants a piece of it. This is not a district game. Highlands and Dixie Heights, always Noon and Fort Thomas, right? Charlie Noon, a quarterback keeper. Dixie returns the favor here. Logan Landers keeps it for a 20-yard score. This is a really good game. Under a minute left here, Highlands with the football, down by a score. Charlie New throwing to Aiden Halpin. Wide open. Wide open down the sideline. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And here we are, final seconds. Highlands throwing to the end zone. He gets it out somehow, oh. but it's picked off. And that's how this thing would end. Here's another look at that. Two-handed I mean, throw. and Look at the effort there to get that off. But Lucky to even get into the end zone, honestly. Yeah, picked off in the end zone, and that's how it would end. Dixie wins it by a score, 28-21. Big, big win for the Colonels there. As good as Ben Neville's pregame speech was, his team may have played even better in his home Holy Cross game. Second play from scrimmage, Tez Calloway with the pick, and he's headed for six. It was pick your poison for Holy Cross. Tez's twin is Tay. Tay is 15 minutes older and the bigger talker. He lets his feet make plenty of noise here on the 69-yard score. We're still in the first quarter here, Caleb. Bulldogs defense had nearly as many points as their offense scored. Adam Boone with another pick six. Holmes had three of them on the night, including one each from the Twins, Tez and Tay. Now we'll check with Coach Neville to see if he can top this week's pregame speech. I don't think he can, though. Probably not. Yeah, no, that was, I think that wins the, uh, the best pregame speech of the year, of the year so for long. sure. Holmes wins 50-28. All right, still in Northern Kentucky, you know who should start? Uh, who he should start paying close attention to? To everybody. Is, is, well, these guys specifically, though. Bishop Brosser, undefeated, ranked top ten in the RPI rankings, playing Ludlow tonight. Austin Shadler with a short touchdown there, giving him something to cheer about out in Alexandria. Brosser quarterback Jacob Late 
Not late on that wide open. A lot of wide open tight end H-back types tonight. Yeah, we like the, the deep tight end touchdowns. 49 yards to Gavin, uh, to David Govan. Bishop Rossert stays unbeaten. They win it big 41-7. First 6-0 start in six years.